Hi everyone, in this lecture we will be talking about meiosis. Let's first discuss the two types of reproduction. The first one is called asexual reproduction and this is where one cell produces two genetically identical offspring. The second type is called sexual reproduction and here we have two distinct cells that produce genetically distinct offspring. A sexual reproduction is used by most bacteria and single-celled organisms. Meanwhile, sexual reproduction is used by higher organisms like plants and animals. In some rare instances, there are also some single-celled organisms that can utilize sexual reproduction. Now in this lecture, we will be talking more about sexual reproduction. The first thing we need to learn are the different types of cells involved in sexual reproduction. The first one are called diploid or diploid cells. These cells have two sets of similar chromosomes called homologues. Now the homologues are functionally the same but may have some slight differences in their nucleotide sequence. In diploid cells, all the chromosomes are homologues except for the sex chromosomes. In humans, our sex chromosomes are called X and Y. These types of cells are also known as somatic cells and they are used to support the haploid cells or our gametes. These are called haploid cells because they only have one set of chromosome and they are derived from a special set of diploid precursor cell known as the germline. In this figure, we can notice that the haploid cell only contains one copy of the chromosome, but it is a combination of both the maternal and paternal chromosome, as indicated by the two colors we can see in these cells, red and blue. Now, what are the advantages of sexual reproduction? Why is it that some organisms use this type of reproduction, while others simply divide themselves into two? The first and main reason is for genetic diversity. In prokaryotes, they also have genetic diversity, but in organisms that use sexual reproduction, the diversity is much more controlled. This is because the creation of our gametes or the haploid cells mixes the maternal and paternal gene variants or what we know as alleles. By doing this, it increases the chance of survival of the organism in harsh environments. At the same time, this can also help remove harmful mutations from the population because in sexual reproduction, especially in higher organisms like animals, species can choose who they would like to mate with and by doing that, it removes harmful mutations which create less fit organisms. Next, let's talk about meiosis or the process of creating haploid cells. In this figure, we can see a comparison between mitosis and meiosis. In the meiosis, there are three processes that occur. First, there is one round of duplication, and this is the same in mitosis and meiosis, in which the 2N nucleus of an organism becomes a 4N nucleus. Afterwards, the main differentiator between the two processes are the number of rounds of nuclear division. In meiosis, there are two successive rounds of nuclear division. We call these as meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Meanwhile, in mitosis, there is only one round of nuclear division, and it produces two diploid cells. In meiosis, there are a resulting four distinct haploid cells. Now, as we mentioned in the previous slide, one of the advantages of sexual reproduction is genetic diversity. And here we will talk about some processes that produce genetic diversity in meiosis. The first one is pairing of the different chromosomes. Now in mitosis, all the chromosomes align in the center of the cell, and we call this as the metaphase plate. But in meiosis, the duplicated homologs are brought together and they form what we call a bivalent. So here we can see that the maternal and the paternal chromosomes here abbreviated by M and P, are brought together. While they are in this stage, the next event that occurs is called crossing over or crossover events. And these are the main contributors of genetic diversity. These are homologous recombinations between non-sister chromatids. Here we can see an example of a paternal chromosome and a maternal chromosome 
and here we can see the crossover event. These can occur with either or both chromatids from the other chromosome. And we can tell that a crossover event has occurred because of the presence of chiasmata, or crossover locations. Now these tell us the number of crossover events. For example, in this figure, we can see at least three chiasmata, which indicate that there have at least been three crossover events that occurs here. Now because of these crossing overs, we are now left with our haploid cells that are a mixture of the maternal and the paternal chromosomes. All right, so that is all for our short lecture on meiosis and sexual reproduction. Please make sure to read these references to learn more about the things we discussed. Thank you very much for listening. If you found this video informative, please consider subscribing to our channel. And make sure to comment below for other topics which you would like to hear discussed.